Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditec, CTO at DVS, and before we go any further, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share and comment on our content. The more you do that, the more the content will grow to suit you. So what are we gonna look at today? It's a really cold morning. We're gonna go look at this new beauty. It's a 32 megapixel, 180 degree, 180 degree pan of view. So those of you that have used the existing eight megapixel version will know how good that product is. One of the best selling in the range. This is an updated version, 32 megapixel. So four stitched together 4K images or in a separate operating mode for 4K images separately so that'll be four channels on an nvr so what does it look like in the box well actually the design hasn't changed since the original concept we've just updated the sensor so inside the box you get the standard pipe vision that's the top mate the top plate with the standard bayonet cap that goes into all of our ptz fitments with safety chain really important you use that safety chain we get all of the usual screwdriver screws fixing screws etc glands waterproof tape to go around the glands and around the um, connectors if you're using them cd and manual and we've also got and there is the lovely 180 degree pan of you so as you can see cable entry on the side if you want to use that so you can take conjure straight into it the adjustment lock-in screw is there so you undo that loosen this and that will turn and rotate and then lock it back into place um, and you've got the release screw there so you turn and release that which then unlocks the plate ready for fitment onto the bayonet cap if needed the cables are all inside tucked away neatly in here so we've got the poe uh, input there got 12 volt dc 24 volt ac there's a model that supports 24 volt ac as well alarm input output audio input output etc um, and we also do a model that supports a direct fiber connection if that's of interest to you. So we're going to go fit this outside. We've already got the existing 180 degree version fitted. So I'm going to go and swap this over and you're going to see the difference. Okay, so before we go out and uh, swap these models over, this is the existing 8 megapixel powered by dark or dark fighter model, should I say. 180 degree image, four lenses, so four uh, 2 megapixel lenses stitched together in one view via the camera it only takes up one channel on the nvr and you can see it's a very very good image and they've become very very popular for public space monitoring stadiums shopping malls that kind of environment and um, this one takes it to another level so bear that in mind we're going to take a snapshot of that image there so we'll keep this one as a reference bear that in mind and when you come back you'll see the quality of the new one okay welcome back so i have fitted the pan of you outside now for those of you that want to know that is the full model number ds-2cd6984 g0 dash ihs and there are some other connotations available but that is the baseline model that is the latest firmware as of today but always check if there is a later firmware available there isn't so far okay straight into it so a couple of things we need to look at is let me just find the uh, image stitching menu you'll see in the pan of you now there is an image stitch menu and there's four separate operating modes Panorama plus EPTZ, and you can choose the amount of channels that are available in the EPTZ. Panoram Panorama, which is uh, straight 180. Original, which is um, the four images separated and divided panorama. We can also set the best stitching distance in meterage. So the car park for us is about 30 meters to the fence line from the uh, fitment of the camera. but So we will leave that as 30 meters but you can adjust that as necessary. So you can understand the different operating modes. Panorama plus EPTZ, if I go into live view, what that means is current, in the current format, I'll get one eight megapixel and five uh, EPTZ. So if I press play, I double click on one, that is the 180 degree view, but it's only an eight megapixel. Still a fantastically good image. So you could leave it in, in that mode. I'll go back, but the EPTZ I can it and then back around the image to suit. So that's operating mode one. So I can manipulate these round and put them where needed and even zoom in if needed. But of course, the electronic PTZs. So you only get a proportion of the resolution 
with the main PTZ. It's 32 megapixel, take away eight, and then these are the rest, the rest by these five. If I go back into configuration, now Jake's gonna have to do some editing on this, I think, because every time I choose a different operating mode, the camera will reboot. There's one thing to note on here, and please pay attention to this. If I if I want to add this as a 32 megapixel stream, then I need a super NVR. Um, with the special firmware. So the special firmware will allow one 32 megapixel image to be added to the Super NVR, so one per Super NVR. Or I can make it panorama per EPTZ or split them into four times eight, K, uh, eight megapixel images and add them as four channels. But if I want to use it as a 32 megapixel device natively, then I need a special firmware for the Super NVR. They are making a firmware that will allow you to add one to a standard I series, but as of yet, it's not finished. So I can adjust the EPTZs as well. So if I click that and click save, it'll say, do I want to reboot the unit? So I'll click yes, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, you can see that it is now uh, a 1080p uh, panoramic, so just one, because I've adjusted it to one. And obviously I've still got the um, eight megapixel image there, and someone's just turned up. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't actually make the resolution of the panoramic any better, but it just reduces the amount of channels that you can add to an NVR, neatens it up. So that's um, the amount of EPTZs that we adjust, and, and so that's that. I'm going to go and quickly reboot this now. So if we go to configuration, we're going to change it. And just so you know, camera one, that's um, 8 megapixel. Camera two, 10 megapixel, uh, 1080p too early in the morning. I need more coffee. For those of you that aren't in the UK and haven't seen the show Peaky Blinders, I urge you to watch it, one of the best shows ever produced. So now we're gonna look at the panorama view. Uh, leave it as three, the default for now. So I'll reboot that, yes, and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, welcome back, so it has rebooted. We'll quickly go and show you. It's now in the 32 megapixel mode, so I set it. There is no substream when it's in main, uh, the you know the fullest resolution, 32 megabits. So you set it to the fullest resolution, 25 frames a second, and H.265 will make that 15 frames a second. You don't need it real time, or at least 25 anyway. So back in the system, image stitching under panorama. You can see encoder track is recommended that we use the uh, encoder track free but there are some settings that aren't available when you do that. As a side note, here's the image stitching uh, notes about what the video output modes do, what the encoder track is and the best stitching distance. You can pause the screen and take a screenshot of that yourself or just read it at your own leisure. So I'm gonna clear that down. We don't need that anymore. So because the web browser inherently isn't really gonna support a 30, 32 megabit pixel image, I've actually loaded IVMS 4200. I've added the device here. So just to show you, it's there, it's added. And let's see what that looks like. It's now just gone half past seven in the morning. So it's, the performance is really, is, is, is very good. And you can see clearly in the writing, say that's, uh, you know, 30 odd meters away. But you can see there, it's a very, very good image indeed. Now, if we come out of that and we go into digital zoom, draw a box, and you can see I can just about make my registration out there. Again, I can go in further. But considering the distance away from that vehicle, which is a good that's going to be 20 meters away. I'm still pleased with the performance of that. Close that down. And now we can go to original or divided panorama. So if I select the original mode and click save, do you want to reboot? Yes. So we'll see you in a minute. Okay, so it's rebooted. We're in original mode now. So that gives us four eight megapixel images. Go to video and audio. You can see I set it to eight megapixel, 15 frames a second, HU65 plus on. And there's four of them. I've done the same to all four. Um, if I go back to IMS 4200, you can see if I double click on the Panaview folder, you can see it's four 8 megapixel images. So again, double click on one. Still a fantastic image at 8 megapixel. 
if I link them to a view like that, you can see they're not stitched correctly. They are four separate images unstitched. But that is that operating mode. That is the most popular one because you don't need custom firmware on the NVR. So you still get the use of a fantastic 8 megapixel image, um, but you don't have the stitching. Okay, welcome back again for the final one. So we've now rebooted it. It's in divided panorama. So again, video and audio. You've got four images, 8 megapixel, no substream. Again, just the mainstream. Um, 12 frames a second, HU65. Um, and I've adjusted all of them to be the same. In fact, let's put that one as 15. So it's a fair thing. Wait for that to save. So the difference with this um, one is it's a 32 megapixel image divided into four. Not like the last mode where there was four separate images. You'll see if I open up IMS 4200 and double click on there, you get the panoramic view in four separate images so on a video wall let me just open that up on a video wall that will present itself in a much much better way so it is a stitched image divided into four eight megapixel streams so again four channels on your but it's not as big as a 32 megapixel channel that is absolutely fantastic will work very well in a video wall or a decoder etc however but again it looks it's like looking out of a window again if that's what you want to use, fantastic. That is the fourth and final operating mode. Do you love it? Again, if I come out of there, view any of those video panes independently, and they still have the digital zoom if required. Again, the further away, the harder it is to view. So hopefully you'll find that beneficial. For me, it's all about the 32 megapixel stitched image is just absolutely fantastic, but granted, not everybody can use it in that mode because of the hardware you have to put behind it to accept that. So I'm going to reboot it one more time and side by side, we'll see the 8 megapixel, what it was to what it is on 32 megapixel. Okay, so this is the 180 degree 8 megapixel pan of view. Of course, it was slightly earlier. So it was still a little bit dark when I change it. But again, fantastic image. Nothing wrong with this device. Very, very popular indeed and this is the 32 megapixel image natively in one image so absolutely fantastic you can see the level of detail brick paving it's absolutely mind-blowing and we do get a lot of people who use these in stadiums football etc and public space monitoring it's available now at dvs so please speak to your dvs sales rep if you need any more information please contact us we hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like like, share and subscribe and we'll see you next week for another how-to video. Thanks guys.